Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The, uh, it's an interesting set of readings that we had this morning, isn't it? We had the, um, and particularly the Gospel reading, the, the shrewd manager. Um, are we uh, recommending, um, you know, what is it, extortion and... Um, not extortion, corruption and, and uh, that kind of thing? Is, is that what we're recommending? I don't think so, no. It's, uh, it's Jesus was using the example of a, uh, of a dishonest manager setting himself up for a good life and he says, see how the people of this world um, are shrewd about their activities um, to you know, feather their nest for the future but in the things of the kingdom of God, uh, we're sometimes so naive. So you, you, basically, you need to use the smarts of this you know, guy that he was using for, for evil purposes. You need to use those kind of smarts and those kinds of uh, um, you know, scheming to uh, put into the kingdom of God so that the uh, kingdom of God may be advanced. He's saying use the same kind of brains you use to send men to the moon uh, in the kingdom of God and we'll see some kind of advancement. And so today I want to talk a little bit about strategies in mission and strategies in the kingdom of God that we need to develop in order to grow the kingdom of God. Um, there is a lament that I hear frequently. The young people aren't in church. My children aren't in church. My grandchildren aren't in church. I hear this lament frequently. And uh, there's probably quite a bit of identification going on between us right now. You all know someone who even used to sit near you in church and is no longer here. Uh, maybe someone who was in your confirmation class, somebody who used to go to youth with you, somebody who even sat on church council with you or on the council of elders with you. And you know they're still kicking around, but they're out there somewhere possibly playing golf while you're sitting in here at worship. This is constant. This story goes over and over again in all sorts of ways and it seems that we're frozen in inactivity. We, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to fix this. We don't even know it's, if, it's, if we're supposed to fix this. Well, I, I want to talk into this today because I think we should. Um, and yes, we are supposed to fix this, and, uh, and we can. So that's the short answer. Right, let's, uh, let's get into a bit of the long answer. It's not too long, but, uh, but there, is, there is more. Um, see, God shares this concern with us. In fact, it's pretty much his only concern is lost souls, people who are not here. This is God's concern. I heard once somebody say, the church is the only organisation on earth who exists for the benefit of non-members. You know, our focus is not on members, well it shouldn't be. Our focus is on those not with us or who haven't joined us. That's our primary focus. Well, it should be. It should be our primary focus. Because Jesus gave us one job. You know, as he ascended, remember in Matthew 28, he ascended with these words. He, he blessed the people and then he said, no, the other way around. He said, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I'll be with you always to the end of the age. And then he blessed them and disappeared from their sight. 
that was his last words to us. That was, uh, it's like, guys, you got one job. Go make disciples. See you, you know, at the end of time. And this is what we see. At some point, we need to be clear about why we're here. I call those the four words that will save your church. Why are we here? Those are the four words that will save your church and if you continually ask that question then that, uh, that brings, that's the right uh, review to be doing in order to keep your church healthy. Um, all right. What cunning plans can we come up? What shrewdness can we introduce to bring about this development and growth in the kingdom of God? Uh, see, I think at some point we've got to draw a line under the decline. You know, the church is not called to decline. Uh, we've seen plenty of that and, and COVID hasn't helped as, as far as numbers go. Um, and, uh, but I think, well, let's, um, let's draw a line under that today, shall we? Can, can we all at least agree on that, that we're going to draw a line under the decline and we're going to say, okay, that, that's all in the past now, that's what we did back then. Um, now we want to look forward and we want to see some kind of growth in our church. Right? And, um, and when I say our church, I say our church represented by this group of people here and the people who meet under this roof but I always speak of the church as far more broadly than that the church is the kingdom of God uh, you know so shorthand we say church and we are concerned about this little patch of God's kingdom um, and rightly so because that's what we are called to do us people here we are called to take care of our little patch because God has given us this area to work with and this building and this structure and, and uh, um, this group of people to reach, to nurture, to care for and to speak into. So when I say church, I, I'm talking about our church here, uh, Peace Church in Gatton, but I'm also uh, you know, speaking into the, the church more broadly. I'm not, I'm not uh, discounting that. So that's a little footnote there for if you're taking notes you can put that in the margin right that's that goes in the margin of of this message um, so see there's i think we need to look at the activity of our church in two different areas we have the the structural area of the church and then you have the ministry and mission area of your church. And it's good to separate those two things and think of those in two different ways. Right, now we need the structural thing and that's the church council. You know, we have uh, chairman and, and we have, well, elders sort of straddle both, but, uh, you know, we have the chairman and, and church council and then, and we've got other stuff too. You know, we've got school council and, uh, Anua and Peace Haven and so there's other add-ons to our thing but they are structural they're the structural things and, and the um, organisational things that are there for the church and every church has those, you'll have some committees but they're there to provide the structure for the mission and ministry that goes on and then, so then you have your other part which is the ministry and mission and, you know, you've got your elders involved in that. And the prayer group. Might be some Bible study groups and that kind of thing. That's your mission and ministry area. So it's sort of the physical and the spiritual aspects of, of church activity. And it's important to remember that both of those areas are important, they're vital to the church because one supports the other. One is the reason for the other. It's like, uh, you know, you walk in here, we, we consider the carpet to be important, but it's not central. But we like having it 
but there's going to be people really concerned about the condition of the carpet because we want it to be clean, we want it to be presentable. Why? So it supports, it's part of the support that makes it comfortable and, and uh, uh, easy for all of you people sitting in here this morning to enjoy worship. We think, well, a, a church doesn't need carpet, but it's, a, it's part of the structure, it's part of the physical thing that makes the spiritual thing happen. Okay? That kind of thing. We, we know that. There are two separate areas. Um, and so, our purpose here is always to be open and welcoming for new people coming in. Um, you know, this, this year I've, uh, I've made it a focus to develop in two areas. One is welcoming and the other is small groups. Uh, I consider those to be ver a very important start for us going forward in the mission and ministry of this church. Two things we need are welcomers and small groups. You know, people. Wh why do we need those things? Firstly, welcomers. Welcomers are, are vitally important to the, the functioning of a church. Um, you know, to welcome new people, both new people and members, uh, you know, provide a, a warm welcome and to record who's here, uh, you know, get the names of any visitors or, or new people and, um, uh, and then, you know, maybe um, give those names to the pastor or the elders or whoever, uh, schedule follow-up and that kind of thing. Well, why is this important for an established church to do? I did some uh, few figures on, the, on our database that we've been developing and found that in a 12-month period we had 61 new people walk in through the doors of this church. 61 people uh, who came once and didn't come again. Um, I don't know who those 61 people are. If we had a... That, that's a bit, little over one a week. Um, if we had a, a, uh, a welcoming team, we would know who those, you know, a functioning welcoming team, we would know who those people are and we could have followed those people up. We don't know if they were just passing through on holidays. If that was the case, fine. That's no problem. But how many of those were people looking for a church you know, responding to the emergency of the pandemic, wanting to find a place of peace and comfort where they could connect with God. If there is a God out there, maybe they're asking. How, how many of those people were that? We don't know. We, we may never know. Um, that's, why we, that's why we need that frontline ministry of people at the door, trained and prepared to welcome those people and do exactly as Jesus calls us to do. Um, it's vital for a church to have that ministry. Um, oh, in going to other churches, you know, you, you pick up things um, that maybe they are doing a little better than us or, or we're doing better than them. It's good to uh, visit a different church every now and then to see these things. And uh, my sister-in-law's church in the Adelaide Hills are exceptional at welcoming. I mean, there's some other stuff that um, maybe they could do a little better, but exceptional at welcoming. You walk in the welcoming area of their church, which is nearly as big as their church, right? The welcoming area is, a, is quite a substantial place. And you walk in there, and it's nice and warm for a start. Now, in the Adelaide Hills, you need that. You know, we don't need that so much here but uh, it's nice and warm. But there's a row of people. And we walked in with, um, I remember one time specifically, we had, uh, you know, the mum and dad and the little ducklings, you know. So we had four kids. I think the oldest one was 18 and then they, you know, go down to about 14. We walked in and we walked past a few people. 
thought, oh, well, it's interesting, there's a row of people here. And then the big people welcomed us. And then I noticed that the people we walked past were younger people. They were members of the youth group or whatever. And they zeroed in on our kids and welcomed them. They were, they were like a well-oiled machine. They were the, they were the um, uh, special forces of welcoming. They were amazing. I was sort of expecting a, a, uh, someone to drop from the ceiling and welcome somebody. You know, they were just everywhere. It wasn't that they were all over us, but they were... It was good welcoming. I thought, wow, this is... You know, it's, that was really memorable for me. Um, it's that sort of thing that... You know, when you go somewhere and you're welcomed well, it, you remember it, don't you? And, you know, if you were looking for a church, if you were, you know, maybe a little bit concerned in your heart or, you know, you had some troubles you were going through and you walked in and you received a good welcome, it's a good step forward to being able to become a member of that church. Um, and the purpose of becoming a member is so that we can nurture and build you up, have this mutual growth between us, you know, growing in love for one another and for the Lord. And so we can do that. So welcoming is particularly important. The other, the other thing that's really important is small groups. Um, I've had a couple of goes at starting small groups. You've heard me go on about this before and we've had a couple of goes at that. We haven't really got anywhere with it. Um, so I'm going to need some help with that. Uh, in some form, we need something that, where people can gather together and grow in their relationship with one another and help each other grow in their relationship with the Lord. Uh, we need to do that. So whatever that looks like, I want you all to put your thinking caps on and work out how we can do that. Um, I've got a suggestion through the announcements that, that may be a lead into that. But I, I can't impress upon you enough how important this is, both for our own personal growth and nurture and for reaching new people. Small groups are just great for that. Because, you know, if, if you're going through a difficult time, you know, you may want to talk to the pastor and the pastor's on holidays or something. Or he's busy with somebody else because somebody else is having a, a difficulty. The, the pastor can only reach so many people. It's, it's actually not that many if the pastor is concerned with the nurture and, and uh, care of, of people, all of that, there's not many that the pastor can, can work with. But if you have a small group of, of half a dozen to a dozen other people that you can call, your help is right there. Your nurture is right there. And you may never have to ask for help because these people have been nurturing and caring for you and speaking into your life the whole, whole time. Um, so there's that. But also, if one of these new people does walk in the door, they've been welcomed, we've got their name and we, you know, we can follow them up and ask them how they're going and they're saying, yes, I'm looking for a church and I'd, you know, I'd, I'd like to um, you know, find out more. And you say, well, come along to our small group. See? Come along to it. We're meeting this Wednesday night. Uh, don't bring anything. We'll feed you. Come along and share this time with us. See how easy that is. And they may not be going through a hard time. They might just, you know, have moved into the town and, uh, you know, looking around for a place. But they're welcomed and, and knitted in and it's an easy way in. Or there might be somebody who's really going through a tough time, their marriage is broken up, they're, you know, they're moved from one state to another and they're on the run and trying to hide and they're just absolutely jittery and a bundle of nerves. 
come around to our place on Wednesday night. You know, we're having a meeting. And so they come and sit, you know, and might just rock in the corner for the first couple of meetings. But they work, see, see how easy care and outreach can be with that kind of thing. So I'm going I'm to need some help with that and I'm going to ask you all to, to think about how in what form we can provide some kind of small group ministry uh, in our church that we can, we can offer people. I really think this is, uh, this is essential to, uh, to growth. It's essential to our own spiritual walk. Um, and so I really commend that to you. Um, I just want to show you our, a couple of slides. Our first slide, just reminding, you know, this is the, uh, the pattern that I work with, uh, a bit of a... a um, what do you call it? A diagram of church ministry, you know, worship at the centre, um, the five areas of, of healthy church stuff, worship, nurture, outreach, prayer, service. These are the areas that we need to work on um, for, uh, for a healthy church. Um, and just showing our next slide too, this is one that you may not have seen. This is my, um, my new person plan. That, that's our flow chart. You know, a new person is welcomed, recorded and connected. I followed up. How did you find our church? Any help needed? Networked in. Home group? Kept in the loop? You know, you need contacts for that, so back to square one for that one. Keep in the loop. Friendships developed and primary pastoral carer. Everyone should have a primary pastoral carer. That may be your home group leader. And discipled. Um, you know, that, that happens in home groups, discipleship study, discovering gifts and then released in ministry. That's, for me, that's a flow chart of how I function with people. I'm going, I'm sort of ticking through that whenever I meet somebody. Where are you in this flow chart? Um, we, we're all somewhere. Um, we all need to be working out how we can move on to the next square or how we can help somebody else move through to the next square. Um, in the past, I have, surprise, surprise, talked about this before, and there are some people I, I know um, in some churches I've been in, there are people who said that, ah, oh, you know, you go on about these strategies and things like that. Is that what you should be preaching about? You know, shouldn't you be preaching about the gospel? Shouldn't you be just preaching the gospel? Right, and all this other stuff you're talking about, strategies and things like that. You know, should you be going into that? Why is a pastor, you know, going through strategies and, and bits and pieces? Well, let me ask you this. Uh, a lot of you know something about agriculture, probably much more than I do. But how do you grow a cabbage? You plant a seed, don't you? Easy. You just plant a seed. So plant the seed and be done with it. Why are these farmers so interested in things like fertiliser and and the, the correct time for, their, for planting the seed and, and then they grow it a little bit first before they plant it out. All that foofing around they do just for a cabbage. Right? Farmers are... They're, you listen to a farmer sometime. They're going on about, you know, fertiliser, rainfall, the time of day. They're talking about the sunshine and the size of the clouds and... Aren't you just interested in cabbages? No, they're interested in the different chemicals and the weeds, new weeds that have come since the flood. And, and the, uh, uh, then there'll be the size of their tractor, the age of their tractor. They're talking about multi-million dollar machinery. Go on and on and on about all of this stuff. Isn't it just a cabbage? You're wise in your earthly affairs. How about your, 
bring a bit of that wisdom into the church. And I'm not talking about growing cabbages now. You're willing to strategize all day and put and uh, put all of this time and effort and this science and and change the whole way you structure your soil for a cabbage. And when it comes to the most important job on earth, the most important harvest on earth, harvesting souls, you say, well, what, what, whatever happens, just preach the gospel and see what happens. No, Jesus says, be, be wise as serpents. You know, get your strategizing minds, bring that scientific mindset, not necessarily the same science, because we're growing different stuff here, bring that same scientific mindset into examining your church activity and your mission activity and see if you can improve that. Because this is the most important harvest on earth and this is what we are called to do. This is what Jesus calls us to do. And this is the harvest that God is looking for. And these are the people, the souls out there are those he weeps for each Sunday morning. They are not sitting in here with you. Also, that's what you did on my, on my call papers. You called me to come and help you regrow your church. So there's that as well. That's why we're looking at, um, at the strategies and wisdom that we want to bring in here. Not because I'm sick of preaching the gospel. It's because we need to do it better. We need to find, we need to preach into the ears of those not yet saved. Right, now, I've got one more slide. So what can we do? This is what we need. Um, someone once said to me, you can't, you can't be disappointed if you've never actually told people what you want. Right? So, here's me being clear about what I think we need in this church. Each member in the word and at prayer. That's, that's, uh, that's basic and vital. Um, regular engaging and godly worship. Yes, we need to continue to look at just our act of worship, not just worship, but look at our act of worship and, and work out how we're doing. Uh, welcome is for new people and regulars. Spoken about that. Good leadership teams and administrative functions. I think we do fairly well in that area. We need members in regular fellowship groups so they can lean on each other, grow together and welcome in new people. I think that's vital. That's, that's got to be our, our next step in this church. And each member taking responsibility for the care and nurture of at least one other family. Do we... We have quite a number of people involved in the mission and ministry of this church. There, I did a quick count and I got to 40 people and still counting. The reason I don't know exactly how many is because I think I've missed some names along the line. But, you know, like with the morning tea and, the, and peacemakers and prayer group and, and uh, the um, committees that we have and those sorts of things, there's about 40 plus people involved in the, in the mission and ministry of this church. We have about 400 people on the books as attenders of this church or people who see themselves as members. We need to, we need to change the dynamic there. We need to shift and think rather in terms of there being members and then um, you know, people involved in mission and administration. We need to turn that around and have a small group of people involved in administration of the church and the rest involved in mission and ministry. Right? So if you call yourself a member of this church, I'm calling you up to active service in mission and ministry. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to be from here on in door knocking your local area. That's, that's not what I'm saying. But 
in, in those areas that I just put, those dot points that I put up there before, you need to ask yourself where you fit in that, uh, in that list, in those lists of things. I want you to take one of those home with you and say, oh, I want to work out how I can be involved in, in this. Getting back to young people, you know the lament that we have? You know, why aren't the young people here? Why aren't my kids here? Um, where's Fred, who used to sit next to me? I know he's not here. Um, you know, if they haven't been for a year or so, they're probably not coming back. I think we need to stop waiting. And we need to realise they're not coming back unless we ask them. Nobody's coming unless we invite them. But we also need to realise, you know, people won't come without an invitation, but they won't stay without accommodation. How do we accommodate people? How can we make room for them when they walk in? In other words, how do they fit into our structure. We need to help them with that. We need to have a strategy which helps people become a part of our church and a part of the mission that God has called us to. We're not called to be members of the church if it doesn't include the mission to the world because Jesus called us to follow him and that's what he's about. So let's do that. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff, isn't it? That's a lot of info. A lot of dot points. May God bless you as you seek out the mission that he's called you to. May you find joy in following him and may you be blessed with that wonderful experience of nurturing somebody else into the faith that's what I long for each one of you because that experience is more precious